the Sphinx, one of the largest and most mysterious monuments of the ancient world. But what secrets does this massive stone beast hide? And could there possibly be more than one out there? When most people think of ancient Egypt, they probably think pyramids. And they're definitely the biggest attraction in a North African country. But if you think they're the oldest evidence of ancient Egypt's archaeological prowess, think again. While the Great Pyramid of Egypt is estimated to have been built during the 4th dynasty around 4,500 years ago, it's believed the Great Sphinx of Giza might be even older. How old? While some evidence points to it being roughly the same age, maybe a hundred years or so older, other scientists have examined the precipitation-induced weathering on the upper levels of the massive statue and concluded that it could have been as much as 2,000 years older than the pyramids. This would make it one of the oldest intact structures in the world. Although many Egyptology experts are skeptical about this possibility, and its size only makes it more impressive. The Sphinx is a whopping 240 feet long, stretching from its front paws to its tail, and stands 66 feet high and 62 feet wide. While it's dwarfed by the biggest pyramids, one of the most impressive things about it is that it seems to be made out of one solid piece of rock. Unlike many of the great architectural achievements of the era, it's not put together from countless pieces of carefully arranged rocks. It's carved from the bedrock itself, reinforced with limestone blocks, and was painstakingly sculpted by countless artisans into the impressive beast it is today. But what kind of beast is it exactly? The Sphinx is an impressive creature with the face of a man, the body of a lion, and is sometimes depicted with the wings of an eagle. While no wings are visible on the Great Sphinx, many mythological depictions exist in both Egyptian architecture and crafts in other cultures. The creature frequently appears in Greek mythology, a female figure who is ruthlessly clever and played a key role in the tragedy of Oedipus. It's likely that the Greeks learned about this creature from the ancient Egyptians, and from there it spread around the world. While depictions vary, today the Sphinx is most frequently portrayed as a ruthless but honorable beast, one who likes to pose riddles to those who come across it. Once you answer the riddle, you're either awarded with safe passage if you solved it successfully, or a quick trip down the Sphinx's gullet if you were unsuccessful. And the most famous riddle was a tricky one. According to Greek mythology, the Sphinx guarded the entry to the city of Thebes, and its riddle was a twisty and metaphysical one. Try it on for size. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs in the evening? No, it's not a strange creature that grows and sheds legs frequently, although that wouldn't really be out of place in Greek mythology. It's man. In the morning, early childhood, we crawl on all fours. As we grow to adulthood, we walk on two legs in the afternoon of life. And as we hit the evening, old age, we gain a third leg in the form of the helpful cane. Would you have gotten it or would the Sphinx have been eating well that day? But if the most famous Sphinx was female, why is the one in Giza clearly male? The statue is several thousand years old, so it's not possible to know exactly what it looked like when it was first carved. But through recreations and other historical documents, it became clear that it looked a lot like the pharaoh Khafre, the king of Egypt when the Sphinx was built. So it's likely the statue was designed as a tribute to him, since the creatures were associated with wisdom, power, and ferocity. Some pharaohs might be okay with an ordinary pyramid, but Khafre wanted to be immortalized as a massive mythological cat man. But the entire story of the Sphinx's discovery is fascinating in itself. A few thousand years can change a landscape a great deal, and over the years the statue became buried under tons of sand. Even during the Greco-Roman era, when Giza was a tourist destination, the statue had to be cleared of sand periodically. Only its head was visible for the most part until 1817, when the first modern excavation fully exposed it to the world and let today's archaeologists and tourists gaze upon the massive beast for the first time. And many were shocked by just how large and how complete the ancient statue was. While the core body is still intact, much of the finer details of the statue have been lost due to centuries of sand erosion it had to endure. But its most distinct and missing feature, its nose, is believed to have been whacked off the statue at some point between the 3rd and 10th century AD. No one is sure why. Theories range from current residents trying to conceal the identity and the appearance of the man the Sphinx was based on, to robbers looking to claim pieces of the famous statue or even a botched repair job. But the most common theory is that it was damaged by the rulers of the era, along with the noses of many other Egyptian statues, as a statement against worshipping previous rulers. And it's part of a much larger complex. It sounds like a haunted video game level, the Giza Necropolis, but in reality it's one of the most important archaeological sites in the world, containing dozens of pyramids including the two largest ones which celebrate the legacies of Khufu and Khafre, 
These two were built in roughly the same era that the Sphinx is believed to be from, making this the golden age of Egyptian archaeology. The Sphinx and these two massive pyramids are surrounded by cemeteries, small pyramids, temples, and statues that are yet to be fully explored. But for those looking for more information on it, they might be out of luck. Unlike the pyramids, there are surprisingly few references to the Sphinx in the writing of ancient Egyptians. In fact, there are a grand total of none. The Greeks were the ones who created the word Sphinx to reference the creature, though a few Egyptian documents do refer to what we believe to be the Sphinx, referring to it as the Horus of the Horizon. This gives more credence to the idea that it was designed to cast the pharaoh of the era in an image of a great god. But as for who built it or what it was supposed to represent, we're out of luck. Unlike the pyramids, it doesn't seem to have any purpose beyond looking impressive and maybe spooking grave robbers who try their luck in the necropolis level. And back then, it likely looked extremely different. Today, the Sphinx looks mostly beige and brown, not that different from the color of the massive swaths of sand surrounding it. But careful analysis of the Sphinx's surface revealed something fascinating – dulled pigments of blue, red, and yellow. This means that the Sphinx was probably painted after it was built and it was likely the most spectacular and colorful sight in the entire necropolis. It also had a beard at one point. A piece of traditional beard piece carved in stone was found in Giza and is now on display at the British Museum in London. However, it's assumed that this might have been a later addition, not part of the original design, because there's no sign of damage on the chin of the Sphinx. Maybe a later pharaoh known for his beard wanted it to look a little more like him. And it wasn't the only time a pharaoh made a mark on the Sphinx. Today, a large granite block sits between the two outstretched paws of the Sphinx. Those who get close will find a detailed inscription that when translated proclaims the sovereignty of the ruler over his domain. But this wasn't part of the original design, it was placed there over a thousand years after the Sphinx was first built. When Pharaoh Thutmose IV conducted the first excavation of the Sphinx after it had been covered by sand in the year 1401 BCE, he added the brick to make his mark on the statue. Now known as the Dream Stele, it still stands there today. Because the difference between defacing a statue with your vanity project and being a key part of a historic site is only a few thousand years. But there is one theory about the Sphinx that hasn't been proven, but it may be the biggest bombshell yet. Could there be another Sphinx out there? The year was 2018 when construction workers were excavating the area under a road between the temples of Karnak and Luxor. They were expecting to find dirt, sand, and maybe some architectural fragments, but instead they struck something much bigger. As they began removing the sand around the structure so they could get a better look, it became clear it was a statue that resembled a lion's body with a human head. Until now, all of the rumors about there being another Sphinx statue were baseless. This statue was buried deep in the sand, and any excavation process would be long and tricky. But early examination didn't make it seem like it would be a twin of the Sphinx, it was much smaller. But that didn't stop curious visitors from trying to catch a glimpse of the mystery statue. But is something much bigger hiding out there? Why do so many people believe there's a second Sphinx out there? Well, the biggest reason is that the original was largely hidden under the sands of Egypt for hundreds of years, at times being completely covered. Thousands of years of sandstorms can wash away a lot of history. And while the Giza necropolis has been largely explored due to its significance, the same can't be said about many other ancient sites that surround Giza. And with many of the pyramids having hidden chambers, ancient security systems, and other mysteries, some conspiracy theorists are asking, why not the Sphinx too? It's long been speculated that the Sphinx might have hidden chambers underneath it. But an even more popular conspiracy speculates that it might have a twin. And the source of this? One of the kings of conspiracies. The TV show Ancient Aliens is famous, or in some circles infamous, for its claims of alien involvement in many ancient architectural achievements. But while these claims are controversial, they seem to catch on. And when they addressed the topic of a second Sphinx, they had lore from ancient Egyptian times to fall back on. While the Sphinx itself was never mentioned by name, the figures believed to be the Sphinx are mentioned in the ancient Egyptian religious text, named the Amduat. This text was represented in scenes painted in the tomb of Amenhotep II, and it supposedly mentions a second Sphinx somewhere facing to the west. But is this really possible? Possible is different from likely. The images on the Amduat show one Sphinx in front of the necropolis and another one at the back, depictions as guardians of the ancient site. But it's possible that the second one was just an artistic flourish, showing the mystical creature's eyes covering every inch of the area. If it does exist, we have a vague idea of where it would be, so why hasn't it been dug up yet? The most likely explanation is that it isn't there, at least not like it used to be. 
It takes an enormous amount of luck to survive 4,000 years in a rough environment like the desert sands of Egypt, and that doesn't include the many invasions and foreign explorers who might have damaged, destroyed, or looted any monument in the ensuing millennia. So, while it's unlikely that the Sphinx has a twin that's still standing, it's still possible explorers could find the foundation or ruins of another Sphinx buried deep down below. But there is one more possibility. While the painting depicts the second Sphinx in a specific place, it's possible that it was just a vague artistic design choice. In reality, a second Sphinx could be outside the Giza necropolis, in areas that haven't been fully excavated for thousands of years, and it might be unlikely that no one stumbled upon it till now, but unlikely isn't impossible. Who knows what's lurking below the sand? Want to learn more about one of the craziest theories out there? Check out evidence that points to ancient Egyptian pharaohs being aliens. Or watch this video instead.